What's going on everyone? We're back at it for another episode. This is episode number five of the Suzuki Samurai Build Series. And today we're continuing on our four link suspension. Last episode we went and cut out some template pieces for our four link frame side mounts. And today we're gonna to be cutting the real ones, tacking them together and throwing them on the Samurai. After our last video, I made some tweaks to my model and I wanted to do a recut of that frame side mount to do some improvements and make it a little bit easier for assembly. If you also remember, the checker plate was used for the previous mounts as I just had some scrap laying around. But now I'm actually going to use proper quarter inch flat plate and I went ahead and cut a big chunk off. So I've loaded that up on the machine already and we're ready to get cutting. I went and picked up some fasteners and these are going to be used for our heim joints when we assemble our rod ends. Well, I really hope you're as excited as I am for this episode because all of our hard work in the past this series is going to start to pay off today. So let's get to work and let's get cutting these mounts. I ended up making not one, but unfortunately two mistakes when cutting out these link mounts. The first one is I actually loaded up the wrong set of G-code to the plasma cutter and I cut out my previous iteration of link mounts. And that's the one where my tabs were not tolerance properly. And then the second mistake is that I forgot to clearance my holes properly. So my fasteners are 5 8 and I ran a 5 8 hole when I cut it. So I should have done 11 16 for a clearance fit, uh, but I didn't do that. So I will have to drill those out. And unfortunately the only drill bit that I have kicking around here for that size is a step drill. So it should do the job, but we do have a little bit of dirty work to get done here before we can move on to actually tacking everything together. And then typically sheet metal comes with mill scale on it, which can affect your weld quality. And then when you run the plasma cutter, there's some slag that's left behind. So I am going to be processing these a little bit prior to welding to try to achieve the best quality weld as possible without any contaminants. As you can tell, we do have to run the cutoff wheel, but we are going to grind through this, pun intended, and we have a lot of fun work ahead of us. So let's throw on a respirator, throw on a face shield, and rally this out. So unfortunately the step drill did not even work, not even close to working, to be honest. Um, I'm sure many of you would have known this, but I was really just trying to go for a last ditch effort to try to get these opened up a bit, and it did not work. I even tried in a drill press and the hand drill was nowhere near. So I can't really open these up to fit my 5 8 bolts. And then I scrounged around the shop and could only find half inch bolts, but they have too long of a shank. The shoulder is too long to actually thread the nut down all the way. So we're kind of out of luck for fasteners as of right now. So my plan is going to be to tack up the rest of the mount and I'm probably gonna make a run to the hardware store and just grab some half inch bolts just to suck everything together so I can finish tack welding this and at least get the links tacked up underneath there today. I ended up running out to the hardware store because the bolts that I had weren't going to work. So I picked up just some uh, three inch long, half inch bolts. They should let me mount the heim joints onto my mounts to actually be able to weld them in the proper spot.
So I'm thinking I'm gonna leave it here for tacking this one together. And I'm going to move over to the samurai frame and put that on the samurai. And then all the final pieces, like for example, I've got a, a top plate around the frame. So this will sit here like this, and I've got an extra gusset, which will just rest on top, like that. So that should add quite a bit of extra strength to it. But I don't really need that full strength right now as I'm just gonna articulate the suspension. And my plan will be to put these on there when I do the finish welding for this part. All right guys, so I took this in there, I mocked it up, and it looks exactly as we'd expect. I didn't really expect any issues here because I've already done this. This is the old checker plate one we did from last episode. So we already knew exactly what we're going in for. This is just a nice finished polished product with any of the lessons learned that we got out of the first version. So with this looking good, I am gonna go ahead and make the mirror version of the other side. And then we can start assembling some of the mounts for the axles. Since we already went through assembling this side of the frame mount, I'm not gonna bore you guys with the assembly on this. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and tack together this other side. It's just a mirror image of it. And then we're going to move on to some of the axle side mounts and get those going. I hate to do this guys, but I think this is the end of the video. Even though this video does feel like it's ending short, for me at least, we really did get a lot of work done. These new mounts look awesome, and although it feels like we just rebuilt the ones in the last video, we took all of the learnings that we got out of it, and if we had to have done this, we would have been running into even more mistakes, having more issues. I was really happy with the way that we approached that. And honestly, seeing these cut out and cutting that massive sheet out on plasma table, was pretty wicked. We we're also able to get some of our axle side links created. So those are looking awesome. I only have a couple left to do. I have also started on the truss. This one is a test run with some of the printing in it. It didn't go exactly as planned, so I do need to run another version. Some other things that have been happening this week is collecting parts for the front suspension. So you guys know Nigel, the Toyota TDI build. He was able to uh, get me a power steering pump for a 22RE, so thank you very much. And then we've also been collecting three link parts. Um, I got a trail gear high steer arms, as well as the drag link and the tie rod. And then on top of that, we've also been looking at our drive line. So I've collected three different drive shafts for this, all different double carbon Toyota drive shafts. So I believe I have two rears and one front. And we're gonna look at those and maybe cut a couple up and throw them on the lathe to try to balance them out. I need to shorten them. I need to shorten one and potentially lengthen another. And I'm also going to be getting some Toyota to Suzuki driveline adapters to mate up to my transfer case. As always, guys, I really appreciate you tuning into this episode. So really watch out for that next episode. It's going to be jam-packed. Check out Nigel's Toyota TDI build. He just released another video last week. And we'll catch you later.